If you plan on installing Windows 11 anytime soon, then there's a couple of tricks that you need to know for a better system. In this video, I'll show you two different methods of varying customizability to get less bloatware on your system right from the bat of installing it. First of all, the super simple basic method of removing a ton of bloatware from Windows is to just download the official Microsoft ISO for Windows 11 by heading across to the link down below. Under download, choose this option, then download now and choose 64 bit here after choosing your language. This will download an ISO file that we can put onto a USB using Rufus, Ventoy, or any tool like that. And of course, if you wanted to install it on a virtual machine, just mount it and install it from there. The important thing is, is that no matter where you get your Windows installed disk from, when you get to this screen over here, simply choose next to time and currency format, this drop down, and select English World, or I suppose any world option. By doing so, when we install it here and click through it as usual, during the installation, you might see something like this, in which case just skip, then continue setting up your PC as usual. And a quick bonus tip, when you get to the Microsoft sign-in screen, you can just hit Shift and F10, then inside of here, type ipconfig space forward slash release as such, and when we click back here, you'll see that we can just create ourselves a user account with a normal password and skip the whole Microsoft account thing anyways. We'll turn off every one of these optional things, and when you eventually reach the actual Windows system, you'll see that there's practically nothing installed but the default Microsoft apps. This is great, but we can go even further. You can head across to the next link down below where we can customize the unattended install for Windows 10 and 11. This allows us to do a ton of things, all the way from automatically creating accounts to customizing our Windows experience, all the way to removing built-in apps. This is going to take a few minutes to go through, but it's definitely worthwhile as you can save this file and keep it for later installs. So starting from the very top, you can customize the language all the way down to setup settings. In here, I'd recommend ticking bypass Windows 11 requirement checks, which is TPM, secure boot, etc. And we can install it without an internet connection. Then you can name your computer if you wish, set a time zone, partition the disk if you'd like to do so automatically. Otherwise, just leave everything as default all the way down to the Windows Edition. Make sure it's set to Pro for the best experience. User accounts, you can set up your own user accounts here. So I'll add a username of whatever and a password of whatever, maybe nothing. And I'll remove the second user account as I only need one account anyways. From there, we can scroll down past allowing passwords to never expire, all the way down to Windows Explorer tweaks. In here, I usually show all files, which include hidden files and the rest, and I show file extensions. It's pretty easy to do in Windows, but it's nice to have things done automatically. Disabling widgets is fantastic. You can turn off the news and weather, just a bit of extra bloat. You can enable the classic right-click menu for a much better Windows 11 experience. A left align the taskbar, which is great. Delete preset icons like Edge, Explorer, Outlook, etc. Hide Edge's first run experience. And that's pretty much all that I do in this section here. Under System Tweaks, we have a ton of control like disabling Windows Defender, turning off UAC, etc. A lot of these aren't great, but what I would recommend is enable long paths, allow execution of PowerShell scripts, and disabling app suggestions, which prevents a ton of hidden and quiet installation of apps in the background like all of these things here. Then scrolling down further into the next section, you can choose to install virtual machine support if you wish. You can connect it to a Wi-Fi network without even needing to type in anything on that computer. It's all pre-configured, although I'll choose to skip Wi-Fi configuration entirely. This way, we won't need to connect to a network in the Windows setup. Then under Express Settings, by default, it turns off all telemetry, which is fantastic for privacy, but you could change your settings here. Removing bloatware, all needs to do here is just select everything and bam, nothing will be installed. However, I would recommend if you're a gamer, unchecking Xbox apps, Notepad Classic and Modern are pretty good to keep. Calculator's great. Cortana, if you wish to use Windows Search, pretty much anywhere that is. Internet Explorer isn't required for a lot of programs, but some of them need it to still function, especially much older programs. Open SSH Client, if you're going to be working with servers like a real techie. Photos as a default photo viewer, it's not too bad. Teams or sticky notes, if you use those. Windows Media Player, if you wish to keep it. And finally, down to Windows Terminal, I usually untick that as well. It's pretty nice to have. 
If you want to link your phone with Windows, untick your phone as well for later use. You can reinstall some of these back, but sometimes if you don't have any of these tick, they're going to be a problem to reinstall later, like the Xbox apps, for example. Scrolling down further, you can run custom scripts to be run before user accounts are created for further customization of your system, all the way down to modifying the registry before we actually boot into it, the first logon after Windows has been installed, and every time a new user logs onto the system. Most of these are just power user things. You can scroll straight past it, all the way down to the bottom, where I'd recommend just downloading the XML file, which we can add inside of our Windows installation medium. So essentially, if you have Windows burnt onto a USB using a tool like Rufus or Belena Etchum, you'll just open up your USB and drag this XML file straight onto your USB. However, if you're going to be using Ventoy or loading this onto virtual machines, etc., you'll need to modify the ISO file, which can't be done with most editors like 7-zip, WinZip, etc. In order to modify an ISO file, you'll need another piece of software, of which there are many, but the easiest by far seems to be AnyBurn. You'll find a link to this down below. Just download it. You can choose 64-bit free to download and install. Otherwise, if you don't want to install it, you can scroll down to the portable version, which instead of installing, you'll just need to unzip to a different place on your PC. I'll put this over here, for example. Opening up AnyBurn, we get a screen like this. All we need to do is select Edit Image File right over here, select an image file, for which we'll click the folder, and select our downloaded Windows installer ISO, open, next, and now we can add to it. Choose add at the very top, add our auto and attend.xml file as such. And once we've done that, click next, followed by modifying the name of where we're saving it to. Just make sure it's different to our original. So I'll call this maybe just win11.iso. Then we'll click create now, wait for this to finish, for which it could take a little bit if you have this on a slow hard drive. And when it's done, we can exit out of it and find the new customized Windows ISO with this auto and attend file inside of it. Now, if we put this on a USB, Ventoy, or virtual machine, we can click through the installation as usual, where we should see there are fewer options, and it should be a little bit quicker to click through. But the important part comes after this. You'll get to the installer, where these windows pop up on top of it. They're doing things in the background. There may be a few of these, until eventually you'll finally finish this. It'll just go through the installation process automatically. You're dropped onto the already customized Windows installation with the start bar on the left. And of course, even fewer pre-installed apps, only what we asked for and nothing more. It's even cleaner. And besides the regular customization, you'll of course want to run through the usual tools of deep bloating, like the opening up edge. Hey, look at that. There's no pop-up or text here that we have to click through. Things like the Chris Titus Tech Ultimate Windows utility that we can copy in to PowerShell running as admin, where we can further debloat our system, install useful apps and things like that. Even though telemetry and stuff like that is already off, there's still a bunch of different tweaks and optimizations that we can do that weren't already included in this. Obviously, as most of these are registry edits and changes anyways, you could technically include them in something like this auto run XML file, but of course that's a bit more advanced than this video. Running ONO Shutup is still great for patching up the last few privacy holes if there are anything, although most of everything should be turned off by default because we turned off telemetry and things should already be looking a lot better than usual Windows installs. In fact, this tool may actually turn some things back on if we apply only the recommended settings as such, which would maybe fix different apps if we're having issues installing them, etc. But of course, from here, you now have a fully functional, super clean Windows installation without too much effort at all. Obviously, you can use the low effort method of just changing the region, or of course, you can customize it way further in depth and skip a ton of the installation process, which is especially useful if you're going to be installing this on multiple PCs, virtual machines, etc. Anyways, that's really it for the super useful, super quick guide. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.